Today we have the Dragon Ranger, the Zoo Ranger or Zyra Ranger or yeah, Zoo Ranger figure from um, the Figure Arts range. Now this is the Japanese version and the American version should be out I think at the end of this month or next month. So I thought we'd have a look at the Japanese one and then when we get the American one we can move on and actually have a look and compare the two. So first of all you'll notice that on the box you have a lovely green ranger, the one where he is playing his flute, which is also the figure. So you'll be able to put the figure in the position of the, um, exactly as you see there. Okay, so you have really nice gold writing as well, which says, Dragon Ranger. So let's move on to the side. So on the side, again, you have Dragon Ranger again at the bottom, and you have a see-through here and the name up there. On the back, you have the different ranges, different poses, shall I say, and you have here, which is the accessory part of the neck for the uh, Akiba Ranger, and then you have the belt as well, which all which comes included. So you can see that the you're able to pose him in different places. So on the back, you have what does it say? Simple style and heroic action, mobility, bonus parts molding optional parts which is the sword of darkness and the dragon dagger okay so on the top it says sh sh figards sh figards is a new standard figure series that incorporates the bandai action figure art under the theme per person character expression through whom humanoid action so going back to the front of the box you have the Zoo Ranger logo, the Super Sentai he's from. You have some other logos including Bandai, and then you also have some of the actual, um, some like the ja uh, Japanese warnings. Also at the bottom you have the Japanese warnings again, which is just there. And the top you have more information. So, let's have a look again. On the other side you have Dragon Ranger, and on the bottom you have the barcode. Okay, so what we'll do is going to crack them open and we're going to look at each of the parts. Okay, so you can see here with the green end of what you get inside the box. So let's have a look. First of all, you get the actual main figure. So let's talk about what you get inside the box before we actually open it up and pose them in different places to see articulate CS. Okay, first of all, you have the Green Ranger here, the Sword of Darkness, the Dragon Dagger, his many different hands and the Akiba Ranger parts for his neck and for his belt. So, what I'll do is gonna crack it open. Have a look at the Green Ranger. So first of all, this is the pose he comes outside the box and he is pretty much quite, he's very light. The detail on him is absolutely amazing. Um, it's just like I have shrunk Tommy down, down to size. So we have a close look at Tommy. So let's see how far we can get about there. Okay, so first of all, everyone notices Tommy's dragon shield. Now, it looks absolutely amazingly detailed. You have your the little dragon feet there, or little claws, uh, which always remind me of Raphael's um, weapons uh, from the Ninja Turtles. So you have the little dragon paws right there, and then on each of the shield you have the line detail which is raised in the show which you can see a lot more detail on so we're now going to look at his helmet now his helmet um, looks to me like it's a little bit squished I don't know why but it just looks a little bit off but you have the detail of his little diamond there you can see the teeth marks just on his figures there and you can also see the detail on his mouth even if, I don't know if you can see it, but when you get yours um, you'll notice that there is little lines just where his mouthpiece is um, that's how detailed they go a line around the helmet at the top and then literally you can move around and also you can see his Adam's apple in there so you know that he's a guy Hello. okay moving his head around it's very very easy so you can move around it looks like he's dazed but you can do that 
Also, which will show the accessories later on, that you can actually take the helmet off and then you can put on his accessory parts. So let's have a look around at the next part. Okay, so his shield doesn't come off, but I've heard that you can snap it off. Um, I don't particularly want to do that because I don't think if we move his hand up. Yeah, the golden parts are underneath his arm won't come off and it will just look a bit weird. So if you wanted to get one of these and add it to the Tyranno Ranger when, later on when that comes out, unfortunately you will not be able to get do that. You have to wait for the armored version. Okay, so moving down to his arms. Get this back in focus. There we go. You have his armbands here. Now the only thing on it, obviously because the lines on his arms are joining, there's a line down there. The detail in his hands, I can move all around like that. So obviously you can pull them off, which we'll be taking off later. Um, and then again, you've got elbow articulation here. So I think, nope, you can't move it anymore. So literally you can move it all the way up there do the same again and move it completely in. Nope. His underarm, I've noticed that on my friends, it's exactly the same. That that piece there, if you can see it, comes out and it looks like, I don't know if it's meant to be the ball joint or if it's part of the thing. Um, maybe get some more articulation. Oh, you can put it back in, but literally, so it helps pose it. So move that down. So my friend uh, wasn't quite sure if that was just a design flaw or if that's part of it. Um, so I really want to take a shield off for some strange reason. Okay, so moving on. On the hands that you'll notice on all of them, the little lines that are actually on the gloves and all Sentai, uh, which is quite cool. So the only downside to this is the fact that just here, if you can see it, um, there's no line going around it. So you'd kind of think that they put it all around there, but I'm guessing for the ball joint, they're not really kind of bothered on that one. So moving down to the bottom part of the Ranger, so his chest. Okay, so if you noticed that just underneath his shield, you can see that there is the diamond just underneath him. So if you did take this off, you'd be able to see his diamond chest and then Literally, if you look around, again, you can see the detail they've gone just jumping it in there, as well as going around to the back. On the back of him, the shield parts come down like this, so you can see exactly what is on there. Again, you have his armbands, and again, you have the diamonds here, so you can see that they all go around. Turning over. Apart from that one there, but obviously, again, that's so he can basically do that there okay so moving down to his thing so you have the belt now we'll be looking at taking the belt off but you can see if you can see it here without it blurring let's just get it a little bit closer that you actually have the dragon coin so there's a dragon coin in there and then again you have a little bit now they won't be able to put the zoo ranger on there but you can tell that they've gone to detail you can see the blackness and you can see the dragon coin the sheath looks absolutely amazing for this one. You know, the dragon dagger will possibly fit perfectly in there. We'll find out as soon as we move in there. But if you don't, if you just want him to hold the sword of darkness, you can put the dragon dagger in there so you don't lose him. So we're now onto the boots. Now the legs, I've noticed with the, all the other figure arts. Oh yeah, you can do it with this one as well. So if you want to put him in a different pose, you can bring his leg down to some degree. I don't want to break this one. Yeah, mine is a little bit stiff on this one. Um, so we're gonna have to change memory cards, but we'll be back in a second. I'm back, we just had to change memory cards. So, okay, so you can move his arm, his legs down a bit more if you want to pose him in, like say, a kick, or if you just want him a bit bigger. Um, I put it back in there because I don't like having them down for some strange reason. They look just absolutely fine. It looks like they've got giant legs, um, but you can pose him and he falls down. Okay, so literally don't be afraid if he does fall down, his shield won't break at the back, but you can move his arms. The only thing I notice is this little part there moves quite a bit. So again, 
I don't know if that's part of the figure because none of the other figure arts I've seen have done that. So it'll be interesting to see if Red's got that one. You can move his arms back into place and then therefore locks it to some degree. I'm guessing with the arms moving up and down, that's the one thing that you have to see. Just move back on to the legs. So literally you have, if you're not familiar with figure arts, they go all the detail into everything and they move his leg up and down, including his toes. So his toes can move up and down but you've got the massive wardrobe. Now because they're brand new, he is a little bit stiff, but after a while I'm guessing that his uh, ball joints are gonna move down. So again, you can see the fact that there is a very small articulation in the boot, just there. You can move him back. So if you want to put him on top of a rock, or you want him basically doing something like that, kneeling or on there you can actually adjust his foot to whatever you want so literally we've had a look at the figure um, the back of it again you have the ball joint there so what you can do is you can really kneel him back that way so if you want him to get him to like a massive kick bring his arm down like that and then he can attack but that does look quite cool because you do get the extra. It kind of smooths back in when you move it. And that's just on my figure. So I don't know if it's on yours. Have a feel and see what it is. But you move them up and down. You can move his legs um, like that. You have the gold trim all around the boot this time. So rather than the gold trim at the arms, you can move it. You have the wrinkles in the boots as well, which is quite cool. And again, you can move the ball joint around whatever you want so if you wanted to you could have him flying Whee! the threat so you know oh yeah son yeah okay so you can literally move him around have it like that so okay let's have a look at his accessories we look at the sword of darkness first so as you can see this is the weapon that Rita gives him I've never seen uh, a Jew Ranger, so I can't, uh, I don't know what it's called, oh, I'm out of focus. So literally, the blade is curved, and you have the ridges there, and then you have a point. Now, it's quite sharp, so be careful. So you have the curve there, and if we bring this closer, you can see that you have the notches on the helmet, you can see the detail in the blade there. And again, the when you get it, you can see, if I move my finger like that, the gem is actually see-through. Um, it's quite sharp everywhere. I'm guessing that's just because of the blade. If you look at it all the way around, it looks absolutely amazing. Now, the only fault that I could actually have is this part here, this little red part. I would have preferred of having this as like feather, like um, string or something, but I'm guessing just in case people have it, it breaks off, you have that part there. So you have him wielding his sword, like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So you have that there. So that looks pretty cool like that. Sword of Darkness looks absolutely fantastic. So let's move on to the next. So this is pretty much what everyone remembers the Green Ranger having. The Dragon Dagger. So let's try and get a little bit closer. Get about there. Okay, the detail on this is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal, there we go. You have the, on the end of the dagger, the golden part has got little ridges, so I can feel them there. Um, next to it you have the gold pipe, I'm guessing it's like a pipe. You have the three buttons that are actually uh, push them, but unfortunately when you push them down, you're not able to call the dragon sword. Um, one thing I like about this is that this part here, his flute part, is actually curved a bit. So it actually goes to the actual ranger's mouth. You have the dragon coin there, and you have the dragon coin there, and then you have the detail on all the piping there, including the little circle -y thing. The green part, now on the toy it was a little bit rough I think, or had a sticker of the rough part, this isn't in it. On the front you have a lot more detailing on the pipe organs, or the metal parts to it. Then you also have the bladed tip, which is quite sharp. And again, you have the thing that goes around the toy, which is quite cool. I really like the, the Dragon Dagger. It's one of my favorite weapons when I was a kid. 
Okay, so these are the parts that I'm guessing in the Mighty Morphing parts, you're not going to be able to get them because the Akiba Ranger parts were not um, in Sentai. Okay. So these are the parts. This is his new neck piece. And again, you have his actual belt again with the American flag. You have the coin and the morpher. Now, if you've not seen Akiba Ranger, um, then you will not understand it. Um, but there will be a picture that will pop up. Um, the very gist of it is when the in the delusional world, where the rangers can think of everything, um, what happens is basically these are the american rangers the powerful rangers so apparently you can take his head off oh no the green ranger so underneath the green helmet you have a little peg so you should be able to take this off as well what was it no you can't put two on there so you can take that off there it is if you can see it there's a ball, so literally he has no head. So, you put it. And you put his head back on. So he is American now. Ah, oh, I'm American. My head will probably fall off. So, when you think it looks secure, obviously you have it like that. And again with the belt, I think you can just... I don't want to break it. Place it with that one there, and place it on top. See, one thing is I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to damage the shield. So I'm guessing that for a collector's point of view, there you go, it clicks in. Don't be too rough because if it does break, then and you've been following this video, I'm not responsible for it. But there you go, the American Ranger. So you can tell by his neck, by his belt, he is a powerful Ranger. Ma ha 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 ha. So move him out of the way. Oh, and by the way, you can take the sheath off like that. And add it on there. So let's test with the Dragon Dagger. Dragon Dagger fits nicely at the end, like that. And then you can add it straight onto him there. Force it in a little bit, not too much, not too much pressure, otherwise it may break. There you go, you have his flute. Oh no, it's not staying in. But yeah. No, it doesn't want to stay in that one. But yeah, you can put it in that way. So we'll put a sheath down. So we're going to look at his hands and then look at it. We've put them back together. Um, I noticed that if you move this slightly, the under uh, golden parts, you can't actually move them. So I think if you did want to take this off, your, if you had a spare green ranger shield, uh, green, yeah, if you had a, a spare green ranger, you can just basically knock uh, quick off and then these parts would come off straight away. So, we're going to look at the hands now. So I've got this back. Okay, if you're not familiar with all the figure arts, then what happens is you can add, you, with, basically I'll quickly explain. You get multiple hands like this one here. Um, yeah, you get multiple hands, so you can have them in different poses. Um, I was going to do one of them with my hands. So you can have it pretty much any way you want. If you wanted him... 
Haunting Sword of Darkness, you have a hand like this. You know, you have the different poses. The standard ones that you get normally in any of the figure arts are them basically punching in a fist like form. That you have here. Yeah. So, in like a fist, but you can easily just pop them off. Um, I normally put them back into the places where you get them. So always look at how, how I always look at this, how your hands are. So with that one there, we need one is like that. So you can either reference the hand, pop it on, So now, in theory, you could hold the sword of darkness like that, uh, but I'm guessing that one is dragon dagger. In there. So there you go, you have him ready to fight with this one. Um, so yeah, that, it, it, the hands I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because you can easily play around with the figure. Um, now literally you can play with it, you can do what you want with it. The detail on the figure is amazing. Um, I'm, I cannot wait for the American releases, I'm guessing they're going to be exactly the same. Um, but I cannot wait for exactly what you get. Um, I'm going to collect the rest of the Japanese ones over time. Um, so the next one is going to be pink. Um, red, I uh, know the next one is going to be red that I'll be looking at. Pink will be the next, and then it'll be literally the other colors of the rainbow, basically. So this is the Green Ranger figure art. Um, literally, I cannot, I, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 because the Green Ranger was my favorite when I was a kid, um, even though I, I'm liking Red Rangers now. but. I've been wanting a toy like this for a long time. Um, the only time I could ever have got another figure is if I bought the Dragon Zord. But this is pretty much an amazing toy. And for any collector, for Power Rangers or Super Sentai, it's a must get. And yeah, so I love this figure. And that's all I can really say now, guys. And I shall see you next time.